Hi everyone, and thanks for visiting my channel again. This video is a mental exercise on how to make a choice when all the options presented to us are bad. Let's start. Imagine yourself a driver of a speeding train on a completely ordinary day when suddenly you see five maintenance workers working on the railway. You know they will not hear you approach and you will not have time to apply brakes and stop in time. But you have the option to turn to an alternative track where there is only one maintenance worker, who you will surely run over if you take the turn, but will save the lives of five people. What would you do? Oh, and think fast because you don't really have time. Most people will say they will turn. It makes sense. It's better to kill one person instead of five, no? All you have to do is turn the steering wheel or press a button and bam, you saved five people. It's simple logic. If you do nothing, five people will die. If you do a small action like press a button, only one person will. Now, let's change the scenario a bit and think if this logic of killing one person for the price of saving five others is the whole point here. You are not the train driver at the moment. You're just a nice person standing on a bridge, enjoying the landscape. You witness a train approaching at high speed and notice five maintenance workers standing on the railways. There is no alternative track, but next to you stands a very fat person. Actually, he's so fat that you know if you push him, he would stop the train and prevent the five workers from getting killed. Assuming no one saw all this and there are no witnesses, would you push that fat person? Well, I guess most of you will say no. But let's think for a moment. What has changed? After all, in both cases, you took an action that would lead to the killing of a person. Is the way you did it is what matters? Maybe pressing a button or turning a wheel is easier than pushing a man to his death? Is it more aesthetic? I wonder what that says about our modern war methods. Anyone who has seen Vikings knows that nowadays it is more clean to murder a person. But that's not our topic. If I think it's okay to take a turn, but it's not okay to push, why is that? The results are similar eventually. Is the results is what is important? Or the act itself that led to the outcome is what is important? Hmm, that's worth a thought. By the way, just to let you know, more men than women said it was okay to push the fat person. In both the train driver scenario and the bridge scenario, decision-making areas and emotional responses in the brain are activated. Although in the bridge scenario, the emotional response is stronger. Maybe that's why fewer women would push the fat person. Let us return to our subject and change the story a little more. And think deeply about this logic that it is better for one person to die in order to save five others. This time, there is no train and no driver. There is one very smart doctor who enters a city to treat five dying patients each dying due to a certain organ failure. While the doctor examined the patients, a young man who was involved in a car accident enters the hospital unconscious. The doctor, and only him, knows the young man is completely healthy and can easily recover. He also finds out that he has the same blood type that all five patients have. In other words, if the doctor kills the young man, then implants his organs in the rest of the patients, they will live but the young man will die. Most of you would not agree that the doctor should kill him, right? Suddenly, this logic of killing a person for the sake of saving five others does not sound logical at all. It sounds as a serious violation of law and even murder. So why did it not sound like that to you in the first scenario? What has changed? After all, the train driver decided to kill one person in order to save five others just as the doctor. What has changed between this scenario and the first scenario, which makes the same result basically, moral at first and immoral right now for most of you? In general, the question arises, is it even possible to quantify human life? So, true, five is more than one, but is it also true for human life? Eventually, every person is a complete universe of its own, are five infinities larger than one infinity? Let's go back for a minute to that first scenario, in which you are the train driver, only this time we will add, for the sake of mental game, some elements and see how they change the story completely. What happens if you were familiar with the one worker that stood on the track, 
but you do not recognize the five workers. What if he's a good friend or a family relative? Would you still think it's right to turn towards him to save the other five? And if the five people were your relatives and that lone worker is not familiar to you? Hmm, seems to me that most of you are in favor of taking the turn this time. What would you do if you know that the five workers are prisoners in community service and are serial killers or rapists, while the one person on the alternative track is just a simple innocent worker? Will you take the turn then? I imagine most of you will not sacrifice an innocent person to save five criminals. But wait, have you become a judge now? Okay, okay, let's give it a political twist and assume the five workers are white and the lonely worker on the alternative track is black. Will taking the turn have a different meaning now? Back to the real world now. Suppose there is a military operation to assassinate a senior member of a terrorist organization who has been pursued for years and has managed to escape each time. He is hard to find, and maybe it is the last chance to catch him. The assassination will be carried out by throwing a bomb off of a plane on the building where the terrorist is occupied. If the pilot decides to drop the bomb, he will endanger the lives of quite a few innocent civilians in the neighborhood. On the other hand, if he doesn't, the terrorist might flee again. His escape will probably endanger the lives of civilians as he is a terrorist. What would you think should the pilot do? And what if the building where the terrorist is hiding is in your neighborhood? near your house or your friends. Would you change your mind? What would you do in each scenario? How would you react to such tough dilemmas? Let us know in the comments down below. We would love to see you again in our next video.